James, his sister Sally, and Mark, their best friend, were bored. They had played all day, but now that it was dark and difficult to see, they had nothing to do. They couldn't play saucer because they couldn't see the ball. They did not want to go inside and play a game because it was a beautiful springtime night and they liked being outside, especially after having to play inside all winter long. They just didn't know what to do and it was a little too early for them to go home. I guess I will just go home, Mark said in a sad voice. Oh, come on, replied James. We still have time for another game of something. Then Silly said, I have an idea. Let's play hide and seek. I was just going to say that, James said. Yeah, I will bet, replied his sister. You always say you were thinking of whatever I think of. She snapped. Don't, James said in a loud voice. Do do, yelled Sally. Mark just looked down at the ground and shook his head from side to side. They are at it again, he mumbled to himself. Then he yelled, okay, let's play hide and seek, hide and seek. I will be the seeker. He turned face. A big tree closed his eyes and started counting out loud. 100, 99, 98, 97. Sally and Mark stopped arguing, looked at each other and ran off in different direction to find his hiding places. In the distance, they could still hear Mark counting 4, 3, 2, 1. Ready or not, here, I come. Then he turned and began looking for places where they could be hiding. Finding Silly was easy. She always ran off and then circled back so she would be close to base. The safe place to go to be before being tagged. Mark looked for the biggest tree and ran towards it. But she wasn't there. I will be, I will bet she is behind the, that big bush. He said to himself, so he ran to it and was ready to tag her, but she wasn't there. As he turned around, he saw James running towards base and dotted after him just before. He touched James' shoulder. James tagged the base and yelled out, safe. Did you get silly yet? James asked, no, said Mark. I haven't been able to find her and it's getting late and we need to be heading home. So both boys yelled out, come, come on, out Sally, come on, out Sally, it's, it's too late. But there was no reply, not even a little sneaker from somewhere in the darkness. They yelled again, come on, out Sally, it's too late. Still, there was no reply from Sally. They began to worry and started searching for her. As they walked around the area, they called out, Sally came, came on. We gave up, you are safe. But no matter where they looked or how much they called out, Sally didn't answer. It was as if she disappeared. Sally was wondering what had happened. All she could remember was crawling under the big trunk of a fallen tree to hide. Now, as she looked up, she saw several stars through a small hole above her head. She had fallen into a hole. When she crawled under the tree trunk, help, she yelled and heard her voice echo throughout what must have been a cave. Help, help, help. Did you hear that James? Mark said excitedly. Silly just yelled for help. Keep yelling, Silly, James screamed. That way we can find you. Silly heard her brother and kept screaming. After a short while, the boys were standing next to the big tree trunk. Hey! Are you stuck under the under this tree? Asked Jim. Kind of silly yelled. When I crawled under it to hide, I fell into a cave. Please help me. I am scared. It's too dark and I can't get out. Mark said, James, you stay with Sally and I will go get my dad. Then he dashed off into the darkness. Don't be scared, James said. I am right here now with you. Now you are not you are not silly sobbed. You are up there and I am down there. As Silly turned in the darkness of the cave, she bumped into something, screamed and began to cry. What's wrong? James yelled. There is something down here with me. Silly replied in a shaky voice. Just then, Mark and his dad came running through the woods. 
Mark's father knelt down and asked Silly if she was okay. He could hear the crying and sobbing. Silly, are you hurt? He asked. No, she said. But I am scared and there is a something down here with me. Stand back, Silly. I am lowering a rope and will be down with you in a second. Mark's dad tried the rope to the tree, found the hole under the tree trunk, wiggled a bit and lowered himself into the cave. Sally could see him coming down the rope and stopped crying. Not only was he there, but the cave became brighter from the beam of his flashlight as it danced across the cave floor and walls. As he reached the floor of the cave, he shone the light on Sally and gave her a big hug. Don't frighten, he said, I will have you out of here in no time. Then he shone the light around and saw that she had fallen into a small cave and very close to her in the middle of the cave was something wrapped in layers of old blankets. Mark, James, there is something down there. I am going to tie it to the rope and I want you to pull it out. Okay, they replied. The boys pulled out the object, untied it and let the loose end of the rope fall back into the cave. The cave wasn't deep and marks. Dad boosted Sally over his head so she could crawl out. He then grabbed the rope with a little jump, was able to grab the opening and pull himself out. Let's go back to my house for a cup of hot tea. I will call your parents so they are not worried and we will see what treasure Sally found, he said. When they got the Mark's house, they sipped their tea and began unwrapping the treasure. They carefully peeled off layers of old blankets, blankets and cloth to reveal a wooden box. They slowly opened it and st stared in amazement. Oh my God, Silly said in disbelief. I don't believe what I am seeing. The boys and Mark's father just stared. Inside the box were jewels of every color you could imagine. There were diamonds, rubies, safaris, and emeralds of all shapes and sizes. Intermixed, they could see several gold coins and strands of pearls. We are rich, the boys screamed. Not quite, interrupted Mark's father. Someone could have lost his and I don't think you should plan on spending uh, any of it until we find out a little more. Besides, Silly found it. I shall share it, Silly said happily. That's nice, Silly replied, Mars dad. But the right thing to do is contact the authorities. The next day, the four of them and Silly's mother drove to the police station, explained what had happened and gave the treasure to the police to hold while they could conduct their investigation. They left the police station sadly and even the double dipped ice cream cones Mark's father bought for them. Didn't make them smile, they drove back in silence. Several weeks passed with no word from the police. Then one evening Mark's father called James, Silly and their parents, the police just called and I think you should come over right now. He said, I am afraid there is some bad news about the prayer. The police are on their way and will explain everything when you get there. Silly and James didn't stay much during the ride to Mark's house. Silly thought that since it was bad news, the prayer belonged to someone else. Even both, they probably lost it. Whatever happened to finders keepers? She mumbled. What did you say, Silly? Her mother asked, Oh, nothing. Silly replied. Then she let out a long, sad sigh that echoed through her car. When they arrived at Mark's house, the police were there with the treasure box. As Silly entered, the captain introduced himself and said, Silly, this is yours. Your parents need to sign some papers, but the box and its contents are yours. Silly, Mark and James shrieked with joy and danced around the room. Then Silly said, what is the bad news? The captain smiled and said, the treasure is worth more than money. You can imagine and with your new found wealth comes great responsibility. Silly didn't quite understand 
what the captain was talking about and right now it really didn't matter mark asked are you going to share of course silly said if you and james didn't help me i might still be there several days later silly asked everyone over to her house i have decided that to do with the money from the treasure after it is sold she said i am giving 1 by 6 to our mom and dad 1 over 6 to mark's mom and dad 1 over 6 to mark 1 over 6 to james and 1 over 6 for me there is an extra 1 over 6 mark proudly start stated he loved math and was right on top of silly's calculation silly said this is why there isn't an extra 1 over 6 I am giving it to the local charity so it can be given to those less fortunate and indeed her mother and father said it was a caring and responsible thing to do they were very proud of her and knew that she understood what the captain meant when he had turned the treasure over to her just days before